so the intermediate density lipid intermediate density lipid it has two fates right it has the two pathways now what are those two pathways let me discuss now so if you take this intermediate density lipid it is either converted into low density lipid right it is either converted into low density lipid by the enzyme the hepatic lipase right by the enzyme hepatic lipase whereas the other way is this intermediate density lipid it is taken up by the liver right it is taken up by the liver so what did we discuss the intermediate density lipid is the lipoprotein which is being formed from the VLDL very low density lipoprotein all right and very low density lipoprotein was what was the function of that it was carrying the triglycerides which are being endogenously synthesized in the liver to various parts of the body so from that VLDL we are getting this particular IDL so this IDL it has two fates one it is being converted into LDL in the presence of enzyme hepatic lipase whereas the other pathway is it is taken up by the liver right it is taken up by the liver through LDL receptors via LDL receptors all right now if you see the function of the LDL right if you see the function of the LDL now remember LDL it will transport mainly the cholesterol esters see for the transportation of the triglycerides from the diet what we take chylomicrons are required whereas for the transportation of the triglycerides which have been endogenously synthesized in the liver we require VLDL now what is the fate of cholesterol how is the cholesterol transported cholesterol it is being transported by your LDL cholesterol that is LDL lipoprotein so LDL lipoprotein it transports the cholesterol esters right it transports the cholesterol esters that is either from the liver to various parts of the body right so what does the LDL do it will transport the cholesterol from the liver to various parts of the body so that is what your LDL does so what did I say you there are mainly five types of lipoproteins chylomicrons HDL LDL VLDL and as well as IDL I have said you what is the role of chylomicrons chylomicrons it will transport the triglycerides which have been taken in the diet to the liver what does the VLDL do VLDL it will transport the triglycerides which have been endogenously synthesized in the liver to various parts of the body what does the IDL do IDL it is formed from the VLDL and it will have two fates one it is either converted into LDL or it is taken up by the liver via LDL receptors now the LDL the other lipoprotein whichever is being formed from the IDL it is required for the transportation of the cholesterol esters now what is the lipoprotein which is being left out the lipoprotein which is being left out is the HDL right the lipoprotein which is being left out is the HDL that is called high density lipoprotein now this particular high density lipoprotein it is formed in the liver right it is formed in the liver right all of your lipoproteins they are formed within the liver right so it is formed in the liver and what it will do is this HDL it will transport the cholesterol from various parts of the body to the liver all right so it will transport the cholesterol from various parts of the body right from various parts of the body to the 
liver so what is your hdl doing hdl it is transporting the cholesterol from various parts of the body to the liver so what is it doing it is causing a reverse cholesterol transport right it is causing reverse cholesterol transport so the cholesterol whichever enters into the liver there the cholesterol is being metabolized into free fatty acids and which is required for the synthesis of bile acids and as well as steroids all right so now what is your hdl doing hdl it is reducing the cholesterol content of our body so that is the reason why hdl this is called as good cholesterol right that is the reason why hdl it is called as good cholesterol whereas you take ldl you take idl you take vldl these are considered as bad cholesterols right these are considered as bad cholesterols why these are considered as bad cholesterols why because they will take the cholesterol or they will take the triglycerides from the liver and they will deposit into various parts of the body and thereby increasing the atherogenesis all right so ldl idl vldl it is they are considered as bad cholesterol whereas the hdl it is considered as good cholesterol because it will cause reverse cholesterol transport all right now now you take this particular lipoproteins that is hdl ldl idl vldl and chylomicrons these are the lipoproteins now there is alteration of the levels of these lipoproteins in some of the diseases right so there is alteration of lipoproteins in some of the diseases now what are those diseases where there is alteration of the lipoproteins that includes mainly your diabetes mellitus and as well as nephrotic syndrome as well as nephrotic syndrome so in case of diabetes mellitus and nephrotic syndrome there is alteration in the levels of this particular lipoproteins now because there is alteration in the levels of lipoproteins in these diseases that is the reason why in this diseases the individual will have dyslipidemia that is the reason why the individual will have dyslipidemia okay all right so that is why this come under a content called secondary dyslipidemias why am i using the word secondary dyslipidemias because it is not directly the problem within the lipoproteins it is because of this disorder there is variation in the levels of the lipoproteins and that is causing dyslipidemia so that is why this is called as secondary dyslipidemias all right we have one more type of dyslipidemia or hyperlipoproteinemia which are familial or genetic in origin all right so the other type where the hyperlipoproteinemia which is familial or genetic in origin that we call it as primary hyperlipoproteinemia that we call it as primary hyperlipoproteinemia and there are certain various types of primary hyperlipoproteinemias which i will discuss